Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the key boom allure. So last time we talked about key booms evoke. So evoke was the one dynamic driver, two balanced armatures. Nice set, very nice set for a first time hybrid. So here we have the allure, and if we kind of slide that over, we'll see. So the allure is one beryllium plated diaphragm dynamic driver. So it's just a beryllium coated dynamic driver. Two pin, this is what it looks like up close. It's kind of got a familiar looking shape. Uh, very nice, uh, kind of lightweight. Uh, a little bit of weight to it, but I would still call it lightweight. It doesn't drag on your ear. Faceplate, sort of a dark greenish uh, thing, kind of nice. Two pin, slightly recessed, vent, vent. And it says key boom on the side. So nice shells. Cable is sort of a matching theme color, a black greenish cable. Two pin, again, quite nice. Uh, Evoke had a nice cable as well. So um, pretty good, I think, for a, uh, a first set of products. I think they did pretty good on the accessories. There is a big, gigantic case uh, in here. Maybe it's still in there. Let's take a look. Yep, so there's the big, gigantic keyboom case that comes with it as well. So nice set of accessories. Um, nice set for a dynamic driver. So again, if you're going to be a dynamic driver entering the market, new company, trying to put out a dynamic driver, I think you do follow a sort of trusted recipe, right? This is Kiboom Allure in the green, and this is Olina SE in red. So this is a very, very popular uh, style of tuning, signature, however you want to call it. So kind of Almost the same, probably the same, but it's probably just a coupler difference, or maybe that's a tip difference. From here, you know, all the way up until about 1.5K. And this little bit right here is, is sort of interesting. Uh, for those of you who are really into pin again, so rising early like Allure does is, is okay, as long as you don't rise too much above 10 dB, and that one is pretty much right there. And then you have to drop off a little bit, Otherwise, you end up with a little too much energy. The alternative is to do what Alina does, is to rise a little bit later. So it's actually a more gentle rise. It's not shouty, but you still get a little energy by rising just as high, but kind of cutting over straight across. So it's almost two flavors of the same signature, and uh, I think they did pretty well. I think this was the right move to bump up a little earlier and then drop off as much as they did. I think that works out very well, and I, and I have to say, I think I do like Allure a lot better than Evoke, and you know, a lot of it is just because it followed a sort of a recipe that that works really well, it works really well for my playlist. So, um, props to those guys for uh, not going out too far on a limb and doing something crazy, but really following something that works, and their variation on it actually does work out quite well. So, um, good move there. So let's jump uh, right into it. So the good, this is a DD that should have been an Evoke. So this dynamic driver, this Brilliant coated set, is definitely a little different than the one that is in Evoke. I don't know what's in Evoke, but it's not as tight and as fast as the one here. And that, you know, I guess maybe the cost would have been too much to put it in both of them. But uh, I do think that that hybrid set could have really used a tighter, faster dynamic driver. And I talked all about that and I harped on it, but it's true. This one is tighter, faster, and it would have paired better with a balanced armature. Also, this is a reminder of how well a one dynamic driver can really do on its own when you hear it back to back with a one plus two. Today's 2022 dynamic drivers are very, very capable dynamic drivers. They can sound almost as good in dynamics and detail and resolution as low count hybrids like a 1.2, like a 1 plus 2. This is another great example of that. So is the other one that I talked about, right? So these two dynamic drivers are, are really good examples of high quality dynamic drivers that can give you kind of mostly what you get out of a 1 plus 2. So again, another good choice done by the guys at Keyboom on their first set. So the good, solid one dynamic driver, solid tuning, like I said, following a very familiar style of tuning. And someone at Keyboom has a real knack for non-fatigue tuning. Um, but 
Allure is a bit better end-to-end -end than Evoke, like I was just talking about. But, you know, like I said, they actually did this really, really well. So enough bass for pretty much any genre. It actually covers lots and lots of your playlist. Nice mids. It actually feels a little mid-centric because this is a drop kind of where Alina is, and Alina comes off a little mid-centric. Same thing here on Allure. So they rise a little bit early, but not too far, not too steep, not too high. It's kind of a perfect energetic level that gives this sort of a more lighter, faster, crisper version of a dynamic driver. I think that was a really good choice. And then you drop it off uh, a little more than you did on Alina, and that just gives you this non-fatiguing rest of the lower treble. And then you end up with some energy that's actually out here. Um, in the upper treble, and the whole thing sounds balanced, and I, I think they just did a really, you know, quality job on the non-fatiguing part of that, not having any crazy peaks, any, you know, over-bumping of the upper treble to give you a little more air. They kind of stuck to a familiar recipe that just works. So the OK, again, this one is a $99 one dynamic driver, and that is right in the middle of a pack of great, you know, one dynamic drivers. Whether they're Arlena, like that is $99, or even um, other cheaper sets, $79 for Moondrops Aria, and even some cheaper ones. You know, this is a very, very difficult part of the market to enter and get people to buy into a set that they probably already have a one dynamic driver that works very well. So to spend another $99. Um, you're probably looking at something that is going to be a side grade or marginally better. So it's just very, very difficult to get people to pay another $99 for another one dynamic driver when they probably already have two or three. So sound, like I said, it's a bit mid-centric because of that bass level is not all that high. It doesn't weigh down the sound at all. The whole bass bit is kind of sitting there right below the mid, so it comes off as mid-centric, neutral-ish. You know, just a little bit of a mid-bass boost for punch and impact, but really no weight behind it. It's a very kind of a lightweight, lighter sounding set. Sounds cleaner and lighter, like I just said. So the bass, that sub-bass, it sounds more rolled off. It actually sounds more rolled off than it looks. And these two sets in particular are really interesting when you, when you hear the bass versus looking at the graph. I think Olina tends to sound heavier or more bassier than what the graph portrays. And I think Allure is actually at the opposite side. It sounds a little lighter. And I think it's just because of that tuning. It's just a lighter, faster uh, style of tuning on that driver. And it comes off as quite fast. The, the mid bass especially, it doesn't persist. It doesn't cloud the sound stage. It's kind of a hit and go. Um, and it's just a style of dynamic driver that I think works really well on this set. So it's... You know, on the graph, it doesn't really look as rolled off, but as far as hearing death to lots of drums, they come off as lighter and faster as opposed to heavier and harder. The benefit is, like I said, it just sounds faster, more detailed, doesn't weigh down the sound, sort of the way um, Evoke did. Evoke had a little too much bass in that area, and it just felt a little congested, and, you know, it just weighed down the sound. It drags it into that mid-bass uh, area. The bass here, it's a secondary player, but tuned well to emphasize the mids, not really for bass-heavy genres. So like I said, it, it actually sounds a little lighter than it graphs, so I wouldn't go too hardcore on the bass, but as far as a mid-centric set providing just enough bass uh, to support the mids, that's exactly what it does. And the mids, they are the primary player. It's a one dynamic driver sound that's just a hair bit lighter and brighter, and that's what sort of caught my attention on the set. It's a little different than your typical one dynamic driver, which tend to have a bigger bass curve, sound a little bassier, a little thicker, a little denser. This one definitely sounds a little lighter and brighter, a little faster. The bass really leaves that clean stage, and the upper mids provide that energy, like I said, that, that peak at just about 10 dB gives you the right amount of energy. The whole thing sounds crisp and refreshing, and that's not something that you find... Um, even if you have other one, di one dynamic drivers, they tend to be a little weightier, um, especially in that mid-bass area. They tend to have a little more meat right there. This one is definitely kind of crisper and lighter. It's kind of like a, um, a low-alcohol beer kind of thing. It's kind of crisper and more refreshing than some of those other sets that you may already have. 
But I do think it's a nice balance for mids through upper treble. I think they really got that right. This has the energy and engagement and visceral impact that was really missing on Evoke. And I sort of harped on that on Evoke, where you've got two balanced armatures that weren't really pulling you in and giving you that balanced armature speed and detail and resolution and edge and sharp and points, you know, all those things that you expect in a balanced armature, not quite there. So this set, bringing the bass down just a little bit so you don't have that mid-bass cloud in your soundstage, you're left with this really open canvas for the mids. And then they tuned it so that that little bit hits just a little bit earlier and right at the right level, and that just gives you that energy, that resolution and detail, all those things that I said were sort of missing on Evoke. Um, that's what you get on that kind of style tuning. So I do think it does have that. Everything that was sort of missing on Evoke is actually here on Allure. So again, I actually do prefer this one over Evoke. And that separation and detail that you're expecting from a $99 one dynamic driver, you know, it's not going to do... 3BA style resolution and detail. That's a little stretch for a one dynamic driver, even at $99. But in this style of what a, what a one dynamic driver should sound like on those two, the bass level, the cleanliness, the speed, the lighter, crisper, all those things really work in favor of giving you something that you would expect at $99. So the treble, that lower is right on. Like I said, they kind of got that, that little pin again area right on. And you can get that by turning it up. Uh, you can turn this one up a lot. There's not really any peakiness to it. There's a very noticeable lack of peakiness, which again, it, it sounds a lot more like $99 than some of the sets that you may have, especially when you turn it up and you notice that everything stays perfectly level. There's no weird bright spots popping out. The tuning is very, very solid. So again, what I would want to hear in a balanced one dynamic driver that can engage with a lower treble and carry enough air into the upper treble in a non-fatiguing, natural way. So again, these are kind of classic things that you look for in one dynamic driver, a very natural um, timbre all the way through the treble. There's no BA metallic, metallic to it. There's no planar you know, timbre to it. Dynamic drivers have sort of a unique end-to-end -end natural sound and again this one sort of hits that um, and does it without really bumping it up in any not in any fatiguing way or any peaky way there's nothing forced here um, very very natural and again they just kind of follow the recipe that works so it's not surprising but i will point it out anyway and stage and again that was a bit that i talked about on evoke evoke should have been should have sounded this big it should have had this much height and this much width and this much depth and it really didn't. It was kind of odd for um, a hybrid to not do that. But this one does have a noticeable increase in height and forward projection coming from the Evoke. When you listen to them back, back to back, this one was definitely better for me. Enough upper treble to elevate instruments. Like I said, it gives you the height that was missing on Evoke and provide that engaging stage that is proper for that $99 set. So again, lots and lots of things that you would have expect expectations for $99 delivered in a set by a company that you haven't heard from before. So again, I, I find the whole story a little strange. I think they've been either found a design and uh, kind of put their name on it, or they hired someone who was already in the business and knew what they were doing. Because a lot of a lot of what happens on this set and the tuning, the driver, all that stuff is sort of a more experienced uh, listen than I was expecting to from a set from a first time company that I never heard of. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time.